if Trump had a day of campaigning like that, you would literally cover it with uh, incredibly positive terms. You'd be like, this is the most amazing thing that just happened. Yeah, we're going to talk about Ben Shabibo. So Kamala Harris's first day of campaigning did not go well is the title of Ben Shapiro's uh, video. However, in the real world, I would say raising $80 million, like raising $80 million without even saying your first word as the presidential candidate is pretty solid, I, I think. But let's Last see night, what he had to Kamala say. Kamala Harris did a campaign event. It was really for her own <laughs> staffers. And she led off by praising Joe Biden. This, by the way, is going to be the chief vulnerability for Kamala Harris. We'll discuss all of her vulnerabilities in a moment. She is not a strong candidate. But her chief vulnerability is she's the vice president of a wildly unpopular administration. This administration does not have a list of accomplishments Americans like. It is amazing to watch all these people come out of the woodwork and declare that Joe Biden actually has been an amazing president. Now, a minute ago, they said he was really bad at presidenting. Then he dropped out and suddenly he's an amazing president. Why? Well, they have to flip the narrative. If it turns out he's a crappy president and that Kamala Harris is his crappy vice president, well, then probably she's not a very good candidate. So here is Kamala Harris at the campaign event last night suggesting that Joe Biden has a legacy of accomplishment, which is wild since his main accomplishment is just beating Donald Trump. And then his secondary accomplishment, apparently, according to Democrats, is dying in a debate and dropping out of the race. Here's Kamala Harris. Our president, Joe Biden, wanted to be here today. He is feeling much better and recovering fast. And he looks forward to getting back on the road. And I wanted to say a few words about our president. Joe Biden's legacy of accomplishment over the past three years is unmatched in modern history. You people are mean. Wait, why are we mean? What do we say? Oh, boy. How would you like four years of that? Okay, if I'm Ben Shapiro and I sound like I have to be shoved into a locker at any moment, I probably won't be making fun of people's, the way people, you know, sound all too much. I mean, it's it's basically like Ben Shapiro making fun of someone for their height. You know what I mean? Oh, that person is objectively too short to be president. It's like, bro, have you seen yourself? Like, what the f are you saying? Like, that's crazy. Oh, I can't, I can't wait to hear four years of that. Eight years of that. Would you love that? Would you love eight years of that right there? By the way, solid attack, Ben. You got this. His accomplishments are burning the Middle East to a crisp, lighting Ukraine. Yo, no, you're not allowed. You, dude. Destroying the economy via inflation. Destroying whatever possibility there was of building of social fabric through radical social policy. I mean, truly, name the magical accomplishments of Joe Biden other than elevating Kamala Harris to the nomination via proxy. Because again, she has received zero, count them zero, Democratic primary votes ever in her entire life. Yeah, but she was and on the ticket that won the election. You know what I mean? You could say she's untested, but that's a fear for the Democrats. That's not a concern or shouldn't be a concern for the uh, Republicans because, you know, you are you should be excited at the prospect of going up against someone who is so untested and possibly so bad. And now she's the nominee for the president of the United States. So what is her campaign against Donald Trump going to be? She says that she's going to prosecute Trump. Honestly, like, really, this is all you got in the can? Seriously, this is what you got? So Democrats have been trying this crap since 2015. Since 2015, the idea has been Donald Trump is an out-of-the-box criminal, and we are going to prosecute the case against Donald Trump. Okay, guys, good luck with that. Seriously. Kamala Harris, they are trying to make fetch happen by selecting Kamala Harris. And she is trying to make fetch happen by going after Donald Trump on a prosecutorial basis. This is the kind of stuff that jazzes up a very, very small wing of the Democratic base and literally no one else. Here's Kamala Harris. In the days no, I think Donald Trump being branded a convicted felon definitely makes a lot of people in the margins, especially in America, who are incredibly reactionary when it comes to criminal justice, go, I'm never voting for a felon. Straight up. I would absolutely vote for a felon, by the way. I don't give a fuck about that sort of shit at all. But I wouldn't say that I'm the average American voter. Days and weeks ahead, I, together with you, will do everything in my power to unite our Democratic Party, to unite our nation, and to win this election. 
You know, as many of you know, before I was elected as vice president, before I was elected as United States senator, I was the elected attorney general, as I've mentioned, of California. And before that, I was a courtroom prosecutor. In those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. <laughs> Predators who abused women. Fraudsters who ripped off consumers. Cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. No, oh, she's going to prosecute the president of the... <laughs> mm-hmm. By the way, this is why I say it's like the lane is wide open for like a charismatic right winger. Because like, this is it. This is the best you get. That's why I always say it's like ridiculous that people are like, oh, you're a leftist grifter. It's like, dude, I would f***ing clean house. If I wanted to grift, I would grift on the right. I wouldn't grift on extra difficulty mode. Okay. This is three minutes and 34 seconds. And all he's done so far is like, ah, like he's just made these weird noises to be like, that's how Kamala sounds like. That's horrible. You are a nerd, brother. What are you doing? You're not supposed to be out here making fun of people's uh, voices. I do that shit. Okay. You're supposed to be the intellectual, not the himbo. You know, she was a really bad prosecutor, by the way. If you don't believe me, go watch episode one of our series, Scamala, which is all about Kamala Harris. You can go watch that over at Daily Wire Plus right now when you use that 47% off and become a subscriber. Again, it's everything you need to know about. Damn, they must be on hard times. We are prepared for Kamala Harris to be the nominee. As a Jewish person, I'm annoyed he can't write proper jokes. Brother, that's like his point of radicalization. <laughs> like, you're just describing why he became a right-wing guy. He was a dude in Hollywood, like living in Los Angeles, that tried to make it in Hollywood, failed because he was an objectively bad writer, a failed screenwriter who then, you know, took all of that animosity that he felt towards Hollywood and turned it into like right-wing reactionary sentiment. Full on two weeks ago, which is why we cut that series. Okay, that, that is not, okay, try it. Seriously, try it. You're going to process, Donald Trump has 100% name recognition, 100%. No one's perception of Donald Trump is going to change from here on out. True, and that's not a good thing for Trump. That's a very bad thing for Trump. The question is, can Kamala Harris generate any enthusiasm? And honestly, I haven't seen so much fake enthusiasm for anything in American public life. Bro, what are we talking about? Dude, you say facts don't care about your feelings. It's literally a sticker on your laptop. Obviously, tracking enthusiasm is a rather difficult thing to do, except there is so much momentum in that direction that you immediately saw, okay? Not a Kamala Glazer, not Coconut Pilder, whatever. Just stating facts here. $250 million total raised with 80 million of that 250 coming straight from small donors through the Act Blue portal. 60% of those donations are first time donators just because it wasn't Joe Biden, okay? That's it. The Democrats were like, oh my God, thank God. 83% of Democrats after this decision was made, said they were excited at the prospect of the ticket changing. 83%. What are we doing? What are we saying? Is the media routinely lying about how much of a carcass Joe was and tried to keep him in the race desperately till the very last moment? Or are they lying now about the momentum? Which one is it? Life Since Beyonce dropped her last album. The, the amount of fake airsats enthusiasm Democrats are trying to gin up, and you can feel it. You can feel it's not real. You can feel they're trying, to, they're trying to whip themselves into a lather over Kamala Harris. But there's a phrase that's historically been used about politics. Which you say so Ben Shapiro isn't smart? I don't think Ben Shapiro is stupid. I just think he's bad as a propagandist on this issue. I don't like Ben Shapiro. I don't agree with Ben Shapiro. I don't think he is a good person. I don't like his worldview. I think he's a smart guy who is very dishonest. And that's it. Democrats fall in love. Republicans fall in line. In this election, it's precisely the reverse. Republicans love their candidate. Overall, Republicans love Trump. They have loyalty to Trump. Democrats are falling in line. No one loves Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris has run for president before. She was such a terrible candidate that everyone, including Politico, ran full pieces on how awful her candidacy was. Then she was such a terrible vice president that half her staff quit. Yeah, he's not wrong about any of this stuff. All of this stuff is correct, except it doesn't matter. Because she's now the candidate, and Democrats love falling in line, okay? People say Democrats fall in love, Republicans fall in line, but 
No, Democrats also love falling in line when the general election comes around. And the general election was here. And in spite of all of the attitude and the motivation that the Democrats demonstrate on a regular basis, okay? Yeah, also, staff turnover <laughs> is pretty funny when talking about Trump on the other side of the ticket as well. You're not wrong. Trump's staff turnover is 92%. Half of them are in jail. And the ones that aren't in jail are actively in witness protection, speaking out against them. <laughs> Sometimes they are both in jail and also speaking out against them, like the last court case that happened in New York, you know. She's truly bad at this, and we shouldn't remember how bad she is at this. So all this sort of desperate hope that you're seeing in Democratic circles, reality will set in, I believe, soon enough, because Kamala Harris is not a good candidate, and she has proved that repeatedly. Remember, Kamala Harris, she's only run effectively one competitive race in the last 20 years, and that was for Attorney General of the state of California. She won by one point. By one point, then she ran a completely non-competitive race in the California Senate for the Senate seat in California against Loretta Sanchez, a fellow Democrat. And then she ran the worst presidential campaign since Rick Perry. That's weird. You're talking about how she only won something against a fellow Democrat. And then you're talking about her primary defeat where she ran against other Democrats. Yeah, she lost the primary big time. And I don't think she is a... I don't think individually on her own, I don't think she's the type of person. She's the type of person to be able to like successfully win a primary and then go to win a general election. We don't have to make those political calculations at this moment because she is the Democratic Party's nominee. Here's Kamala Harris again trying to make the pitch. We are not going to go back. We're not. He and his extreme project 2025 will weaken the middle class Come on. and bring us backward. America has tried. Ben Shapiro is literally the poster boy for project 2025. I don't know why he's saying come on. Ben Shapiro directly regurgitates Heritage Foundation talking points. Like that's what his job is. That's what his entire career is. Why the f*** is he acting like project 2025 is a problem? I know he doesn't think project 2025 is a problem. These economic policies before, they do not lead to prosperity. They lead to inequity and economic injustice. And we are not going back. God, she is so awful. I mean, even her juxtaposition right there of prosperity with economic injustice is truly amazing. Because again, the opposite of prosperity is poverty. It's poverty. Right? When she says that we are, we are going, they lead us away from Wow, dude, you're really killing it. Just say she has no riz. Like, you could say that she is not very energized on that speech, and she's basically repeating the exact script that Joe Biden would have read, but he was unable to read it because he couldn't read anything at that point. You don't have to be like, oh, well, uh, the, the opposite is prosperity. The opposite of prosperity is poverty. You're stupid. Prosperity and toward economic injustice. Notice what she's doing there. She's doing the equity routine. You know what Americans don't like? the racialized equity routine that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have been pushing nonstop since they entered office. What? Her campaign, if she's actually in control of it, her only hope here is to delegate this thing. Bro, these guys are so perma stuck in 2016. Absolutely zero people think about like equality versus equity narratives anymore. Like the IDW died out. That's not a real thing that most Americans are like aware of. You can't just say DEI. That's the new meta, dumbass. This is very 2016 coded to just be like, um... Americans want equality. They hate equity, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, they don't. They don't. It's just like, just say DEI. DEI literally has the word equity in it. But when you try to make these inferences into like equity being a bad thing because it's not equality or whatever, you know, it's not going to work. To the Obama team. That is really her only hope here. She already got rid of, of the Biden team. It's not going to be Tom Donilon. It's not, not going to be Jen O'Malley Dillon. It's not going to be the people who got Joe Biden there because they don't like her very much and she doesn't like them. And it better not be her 2019 presidential campaign team because they were truly awful. Her only hope is to basically sit down and be quiet and let Barack Obama's people run this thing. That is her only hope. So far, that doesn't seem to be the case. So, for example, according to BBC, Kamala Harris has yeah, overhauled her campaign's online presence by embracing a social media trend inspired by pop star Charlie. Yeah, she's not really talking about race at all, but he like injected race into the conversation, which is like weird too. Charlie XCX's Brat album cover. The presumptive Democratic presidential nominee has scattered references to the album across her campaign's account, renaming her profile Kamala HQ. Her rebrand comes as... It's funny how some chatters were three treating you like you sounded like this yesterday. Yes, yeah, because chatters are on the Kamala train, okay? Chatters are just excited for anybody but Biden. A lot of chatters in this community, a lot of people in this community are just like, they want to be hopeful. 
It's not going to happen for me. I've been doing this for far too long to be hopeful like that. That's why I've been saying I'm going to sit back and I'm going to watch. Let's continue. Charlie showed her support by treating Kamala is brat shortly after President Joe Biden announced he was stepping out of the race. By Monday morning, Harris had seized on Charlie XCX's backing with the account supporting a new lime green photo in the style of the Brat album cover. So for those of you who have no idea what exactly Brat means because you know you're over the age of 15, here's what Brat means according to Charlie XCX. You're just like that girl who's a little messy and likes to party and maybe says some dumb things sometimes, who feels like herself, but maybe also has a breakdown, but kind of like parties, though it is it is very honest, very blunt, a little bit. I was trying to do wet ass again, dude. Chatters, remember, as a professional, this is my third election cycle. Like, I've always been a nerd and been really into politics, but like, you have to remember, this is my third election cycle with the Democrats going to be very, very hard for me to feel confident or feel hopeful about America's prospects in the same way that like you guys might be, because maybe this is your second election cycle. Maybe it's your first election cycle. And I'm saying as a professional commentator, it's my third. It's like, obviously I've been paying attention to American politics uh, for much longer than that, but. Volatile, like does dumb things, but it's Brad. You're Brad. That's Brad. <laughs> Okay, that is the campaign that I desperately hope Kamala Harris continues to run. Kamala Harris as brat. Says dumb things, does dumb things, get drunk sometimes, but has fun. Also, can I just explain? No one above the age of 25 in the United States knows what the F brat means. When we think brat, we think like spoil brat, like some of our children. <laughs> no one thinks brat is something good. But Kamala Harris is so terminally online, so disconnected from the general public that she believes that Charlie XCX, who, again, most people above the age of 35 have never heard of Charlie XCX. She thinks that embracing the branding of Charlie XCX is somehow good for her. That's how disconnected and terrible her campaign is. Now, for his part, Donald Trump slammed Harris as dumb as a rock on his Truth Social page. Now, again, I think he's going to have to do better than this in terms of the nickname. This is, this is pretty... Eh. Here's what he posted. He said, wow, just watching the fake news, they're doing their very best to turn the worst president in the history of our country into a brilliant and heroic leader. He was heroic because he quit. Dude, that's 10 minutes now. And he did not even once mention the polls that came out immediately after Kamala Harris was announced as the presidential nominee that showed 83% of Democrats saying that they were excited about the decision. Nor did he talk about the historic record-breaking fundraising from small donors 60% of those donors being first-time donors to the Democratic Party. That's data. That's the closest you can get to data in terms of enthusiasm, okay? Like, that's enthusiasm. That's not a bad day of campaigning. That is a phenomenal day of campaigning. As a matter of fact, if Trump had a day of campaigning like that, you would literally cover it with uh, incredibly positive terms. You'd be like, this is the most amazing thing that just happened. And turn dumb as a rock, Kamala Harris, from a totally failed and insignificant vice president into a future great president. No, it just doesn't work that way. He's been trying out a few different lines on Kamala Harris. So he has called her laughing at Kamala, which, meh. Uh, again, I recommend scam. Made up numbers? This mother spitting? Wait, you think I made those numbers up? Like, you think we're just lying about everything? Like, what? So would you, because you're honest? Yeah, like, I don't like Donald Trump. I will always tell you that I don't like Donald Trump as a president. I love him as a, as a person. I love him as my lover. I love Donald Trump as a father. I love him as a uh, sex icon. But as president, I don't love him, okay? He should be never anywhere near uh, power, okay? He should not. He should not be anywhere near offices. It's just bad guy. I think that it is the best term for her. Also, I think I'm a liar would probably be good because she is deeply, deeply dishonest. You know, just a few suggestions for the president, if he is taking suggestions. He did call her this morning Lion Kamala, which again, he used the lion's head, but then he also called Joe Biden Crooked Joe. So Lion, lion Kamala is pretty good. Again, I think that's probably, and it seems like he's settling on that because he's used that multiple times this morning. He said, Lion Kamala Harris, the Biden appointed border czar who never visited the border and whose incompetence gave us the worst and most dangerous uh, border anywhere in please. the world has absolutely terrible poll numbers against a fine and brilliant young man named Donald J. Trump. I love that Trump calls himself a fine and brilliant young man. He's 78. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, Democrats, MAGA, 2024. There's something really unsettling about watching this demon laugh or fake laugh. He's just so gross. He's just like such a robotic man. 
So when he tries to demonstrate any emotion that's not anger, you're like, uh, that doesn't feel normal. So yeah, pretty, pretty solid stuff there from President Trump. Yeah, that was uh, not exactly a great take.